Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And a couple of Christmas cards using all die cuts. It is December after all, and die cuts are the thing. Plus, I've had these for a while. <laughs> I purchased um, several memory box uh, wafer dies as well as the poppy, some poppy stamps wafer dies, which I didn't use. But for those that aren't aware, poppy stamps is owned by memory box. They just have like, a couple different lines within their um, like company. And I purchased some of these wafer dies a couple months ago. I forget. And yeah, it's time to use them. They're super cute. So I did just a bunch of die cutting of watercolor paper. And then I use my Distress watercolor pencils in my palette. I have done a video showing how I put these into a palette because this is how Distress watercolor pencils come. They're watercolor pencils. They come in little tins, everything. I have done an entire video, so I'm not going to go over it again, but it will be linked in the end screen. At the end of this video, I will have a video showing exactly how I did my little palette. This is how I prefer to use it. I will also link to my playlist using the Distress Watercolor pencils because I have several videos that I've done using them. So I will link to that as well along with my holiday 2023 playlist. That will be linked at the end screen as well. And then for everything else, I will have links in the description box below the video to all the supplies I used, etc. So let's get into showing you guys how I made these cards. So as always, to the first step to make a die cut scene card is to do the die cutting. <laughs> I'm not going to show all of it. It's kind of redundant. Also, I can't film my die cutting. Um, I talked about this in a couple recent videos in my recent live stream that I finally unboxed my Anna Griffin Empress die cut machine. I've actually had it for a few months. I just needed to make space for it, you know, so I've got it here on my desk. But it's out of camera sight and it's another, you know, item on the to-do list to maybe set up another camera. But <laughs> one thing at a time. Anyway, I did all my die cutting using several memory box wafer dies. I will have links to them all in the description box below. I could not move fast enough to get this video up. I apologize. Um, when I started editing this video, everything was still in stock. As of the point now I'm at with the voiceover, most of it is no longer in stock. Hopefully they'll be able to restock. Like I have no control over these things, but I will have links. It's all listed. It's all linked. They're all great. And yeah, anyway, I die cut all the watercolor paper using these little wafer dies and ones, well, pretty much all of them. I die cut multiples of because I knew I was going to do two cards. I had a rough idea what you know, I was going to make. And one's like, this is the little nestled chickadee duo tie set. It's so cute. You guys know, I have been, ta I've been talking about this quite a bit. I, there's something about birds. I love little bird die cuts. I think they're so cute. I avoided using them for the longest time. I just had a weird hang up about it. And then once you start putting a bird on it, you just got to do it with everything. So all my little die cut pieces. And I am using my just stick and stamp mats. I have been using my like waffle flower, waffle flower grip mats a lot in however many months now. And I still love my grip mats. They're great. They'd work for this too. But I decided the stick, the sticky on these stick and stamp mats was a little bit what I needed. Because you can see I have, I have lots, ta lots and lots and lots. And this is one of three <laughs> of little die cuts. And I was going to do this watercoloring. So it's like, mm, I think I, I need to pull up my stick and stamp mats for this. This will just make my life a little bit easier. Because especially I've got a lot of really little pieces. And this works. Um, with the stick and stamp mats, the only thing to remember is you you can't scrub them. Like, don't scrub them. Don't use cleaners on them. Brutus Monroe does make a, a cleaner specifically for the stick and stamp mats. Honestly, I don't even use that. I just rinse them under water. That's it. So they'll be stained. Sometimes there'll still be some a little bit of residue from things like specifically these watercolors. But that's fine. I just, when I'm done and I take everything off, I will rinse them under the sink, let them air dry. They're good to go. And I've been using these over and over again now for, I don't know, a year or long. I forget when these originally came out. But yeah. So I'm going to, I just switch between these and the grip mats. It just depends on what I'm doing. And then yes, just dress watercolor pencils in my little palette. 
This is how I prefer to use them. I don't like coloring with uh, pencils, the pressure and just how it is on my hands. It doesn't work for me. I much prefer this and setting up this palette was the best idea. And like I said in the intro, I've got a video showing exactly how I did it. I do not have any of these labeled. I get asked that a lot, like which colors which. I pretty much know them all off by just by sight because I've been using distress colors forever and I love them. But it's also on the to-do list. The never-ending to-do list. <laughs> Labeling the colors. But anywho, here's now panel two with more die cuts. These are some leafy ones because the first one was the Nestle Chickadee Duo wafer die set and I was using the small poinsettia layers dies. This one is die cuts from the leaf bunches and the pine needle sprigs. So I did kind of a little bit of a custom mix for the leaf bunches. I was going for kind of a sage sort of a color. And then for the pine needle sprigs, that one I know is rustic wilderness. Like just that deep intense green that I love so much. And yeah, I slapped the color on. I know I say this a lot in videos, but it's true. Especially in this case. This is, that's it. Slap it on. You don't need to do anything special. That's why I'm going to title it as like easy watercolor because no skill needed at all none zero just add color and you're good so that's what I did I slapped the color on um in the beginning I was using my little just uh water brush my little ranger detail water brush that I've had for a million years and then I switched to just this is just a nouveau brush again I'll link, link to the pack you get a pack of like 10 of them they're dirt cheap I use them all the time and it just covers a wider area so for the birdhouse, this one I know as well as this prize ribbon, because I was like, ooh, a little blue birdhouse. How cute would that be? <laughs> so slap the color on. Um, the pieces don't stick very well to this stick and stamp mat. I've talked about this before in the past. I, you know, had a moment. And even though I knew better and I knew what would happen, I did it anyway. I used my heat tool to speed up drying. Yeah, the stick and stamp mats aren't heat resistant. So I proved that. I, I melted that heat, that stick and stamp mat, but I still use it because it's still sticky. It just, it's finicky. <laughs> so like, like with everything, do as I say, not as I do. So yeah, don't use your heat tool on things you have stuck to your stick and stamp mats. That's not what they're for. So anywho, after I did all, you know, slapped on all that watercolor, let them dry, which didn't take very long. And then to assemble pretty simple here the birds are ridiculously simple even like I have a lot of die cut so it looks very overwhelming but this is multiple like I die cut four sets so there's eight little birds so that you know there's lots of pieces but for each bird there's not actually that many pieces there's the little tops for their heads there's the little piece that kind of goes right under their beak and then the bird that faces the right has just one little piece for its wings and the bird that faces the left the one there on the top has two pieces and then there's the little um, parts that pop out for the eyes and those I'm actually going to adhere separately in a minute and that's it really simple there's etch lines you can't really see it I don't think on camera but in person like there's deboss lines you know to show where the pieces go and they just it all comes together and they're super cute and I love it and yeah all the little eye pieces, I just had them in a, another one of my little triangle trays just to keep them all contained because they're tiny. You could almost skip it, but I just have it and I just do fin think it just finishes it off. So I adhered those. So I'm using, you know, all my craft tacky glue. I have it in a little precision tip bottle that comes into real handy with little, little finicky die cuts. Reverse tweezers, always. Hi, one of my most recommended like must need you know tool and I do those I do recommend having more than one because they do they grow legs and walk off I now have three pairs at least like that I keep handy at all times I have other pairs that I keep in a drawer in case the three pairs decide to go you know go off and party somewhere because it's only a matter of time anyway reverse tweezers and my little embellishment wand those are like just make life a little easier when you're crafting with small pieces. So I showed how to do the birds. They were simple. The birdhouse, also very simple. Everything just layers 
together. Like it just fits together. It just makes sense. So that bigger piece that kind of goes on the front and it just lines up layers, just gives a bit more dimension. There's this larger roof piece and then there's the thin piece that goes along the bottom of the birdhouse and then there's two pieces that finish off the roof and then there is also a die cut that has the snow so you can choose whether or not you want to use that you know depending on the the season you're making your card for um I had to hunt for my pieces that were for the snow I couldn't find them (laughs) people have been commenting about that in live streams how it's like it's so much more realistic and it's like well yeah because in real life like when I'm doing videos like this I you know I turn off the camera or I just cut it out in editing as because you guys can't see me crawling around on the floor trying to find the pieces that I knocked over or like diving through the random piles of whatever's on my desk, you know, trying to find things like my washi tape. I had to stop filming and hunt it down. I keep it on my desk at all times. I use it multiple times a day. I couldn't find it. I don't even remember where I found it. It was in the most random place. Things like that. It, it happens all the time. <laughs> all the time. So anyway, use the washi tape to cover the back of the opening to put this little circle in there for like the inside of the birdhouse. And yeah, I still at this point, I still couldn't find the tops for the birdhouses, but I do. I find it eventually because I was like, "Mm, I'll just have to re-die cut, you know, some scraps to get that. And then I did find them. Poinsettias, you can kind of do whatever you want with ones like this. It's like you could layer all the pieces and just make one big multi-layered one. In this case, I just layered like the two largest pieces to create one and the two smallest pieces to create one. That's it. Just simple. I didn't add the centers because I had a feeling I was like, "Mm, that's a perfect spot to put bling. So we'll just save that for later. And then my card bases are Simon Says Stamps Sea Glass cardstock. I cut a sheet in half to four and a quarter by 11. I'm scoring it at five and a half inches. So these will be top folding uh, A2 sized cards. So four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I also die cut the same Sea Glass cardstock with the pin cushion plate wafer die. That's also from Simon Says Stamp. This came out in their November release, I think. And I've had it sitting here because I was like, oh, this is just my type of like kind of background especially do things like like tone on tone I also am thinking about doing I have a video in progress and I was thinking of using this wafer die with white cardstock like on a white card base because I just I like that like tone on tone look but if you want to zhuzh it up you could like back it with like glitter paper Mm. it would look amazing but I did tone on tone for this because the like feature is the um the birdhouse and the birds and everything and yeah found the pieces that I die cut (laughs) for the tops of the birdhouses so I didn't have to die cut scraps it was all good I was just being stubborn and I found them underneath a pile of whatever else anyway once I had that done I've talked about this a lot this is one of the reasons I like doing more than one card in a sitting is I use one of the cards to figure out my layout of all the things and none of it's adhered it's there that you can kind of see it there at the top of the screen and then I can follow that on the other one now if you're only doing one card you can figure out your layout take a picture of it with your phone and then follow that because if you're anything like me I've literally figured out my layout taken a photo with my phone forgot to reference the photo and then forgot where I put everything so this is also why I like doing two cards because it's sitting right in front of my face and I can't um And I can't forget, you know, what's going on. But yeah, I've shown that to you in videos. Like, just take a photo with your phone. And I'm not even joking. The amount of times, like, I'll be scrolling through my photos. And I'm like, why do I have all these random photos of, like, partially finished cards? And I was like, oh, yeah, I did that. And then I forgot about it. Anyway, anyway, it's just, I'll give you guys all these, like, tips and tricks that (laughs) I I sort of use and then forget about. (laughs) So, anywho, got everything adhered to these cards once they were adhered I have to you just you gotta gotta add splatter I was like this is the perfect time I got you know the scene and all the things and it's a winter scene need splatter so I put them into my splat box and I've got just white gouache that I put onto my little palette I added a bit of water to thin it out so it gets to a nice consistency and my little fan brush and then I heavily splattered this all over these cards it will dry back a bit and be a little more subtle especially in the background but again in real life it's just like oh yes you know we just you you can just feel it it's just it's just winter winter goodness so 
after I heavily splattered both of these cards with all of the things, I set those aside, let them dry. And then this is why I had a few extra little die cuts because I wanted to put them on the inside of these cards. So I've got, you know, a little leaf sprig, a little pine sprig. I'm going to add one of the little birdies and one of the small poinsettia die cuts. And that's all I'm going to add to the inside. I say that's all, but you guys saw how many die cuts I had when I was coloring them. Um, yeah, I decided like just this. I'm not going to add any sentiments, everything, because I'm going to add just a sentiment to the front of these cards and that's it. Just kind of got my little scene on the inside and we're good to go. And now the sentiments. I was, yeah, these, again, these sold out right before I started this voiceover. I'm kind of annoyed because I was honestly going to order extras. I ordered these and they do come in other colors. They're not listed. So I don't know if they've been discontinued. I really hope Memory Box does more of these. Because again, I'd ordered these a couple months ago, whenever it was when they released. They were three different colors. There was these red ones, there was black ones, and there was white ones. And they're just foiled sentiments. And I ordered them sight unseen. This was the first time I even opened them because I hadn't even looked at them. And I was like, oh, I should, I should use these. Open them up and I'm like, these are awesome because <laughs> they're foiled. And it, it's not just like flimsy um, cardstock I need. They're almost like chipboard. Like they're hefty little things and they're just, they're gorgeous. And I was like, oh, if I had realized that I would have ordered multiples of these because they're just fabulous and there's multiple fonts and yeah here I am raving about it and you know they're not available I again I apologize I hope they can either restock them or they'll do more of them or I don't know memory box if you happen to see this video please please re-release them or I don't know I I have no idea I just think they're awesome and I love your wafer dies too and for those that aren't aware memory box also designs a lot of the wafer dies for the Simon Says Stamp brand and that's also why I'm a huge fan because a lot of my very favorite die sets that I use quite often are you know under the Simon brand but they're actually designed by uh, memory box and I love it I just love it because yeah it's can never have too many good things you know can never have too many awesome little die cuts in my opinion so anywho I adhered those little foiled sentiments with uh, just thin foam squares that I cut in half and popped them into place once all those were adhered pulled out some bling just to finish it off so I've got my kind of go-to just glo gold glitter uh, little rhinestones here and I use them for the flower centers and then I also kind of scattered them around my little scene just to give it that little extra something something you can't really see the sentiment on camera but I'll tilt it on the, in the light so you can read it better yeah because they just say Merry Christmas but yeah they're foiled they're fabulous I love them so anywho yeah that's the video it's it was it just everything completely sold out between the finishing the cards the editing and then the voiceover portion and I'm like man <laughs> but such is my life and doing this as a job regardless hopefully things will get restocked and they will restock ASAP I will have links to all the things listed in the description box below. I'll have the videos I mentioned linked in the end screen at the end of this video. So you can check all that out if you're interested. As always, thank you all so very much for watching, thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.